So here's problem number six from the 2018 AP Calc AB exam. Uh, gives you a differential equation here. And what it presents us with in part A is a slope field. And it asks us to sketch two solution curves into that slope field. The first one through the point 0, 2. So that's what you see I have here in blue. So I started at the point 0, 2 and I kind of covered them up when I sketched the solution curve in. But I knew I had to have a slope of 0 at that ordered pair. And as I worked my way outward, I noticed that my, my slope had to stay 0 the whole way out across the graph for the positive stretch of the x-axis, as well as backward across the negative stretch of the x-axis. Look at these slope segments right above 2 and right below 2. They're, they're pretty much completely level, which kind of indicates along with the completely horizontal segments at 2 that we're going to have a, a constant slope of 0 across that solution curve, and it's going to be the line y equals 2 that ends up getting graphed. Uh, part the second part of part A was a little tougher, so start at the ordered pair 1, 0, so 1, 0 is here. So I had to have kind of a medium positive slope at that ordered pair uh, at where I was starting my graph. And as I worked my way upward to the right, I saw that my slope had to begin to kind of taper off. And then I'm going to have to have this be, I should have actually pulled this up a little bit further. The asymptote looks like it's a little bit below this horizontal line, but the asymptote is actually going to be at y equals 2. I still have a tiny positive slope here, so I should have kind of inched that up a little bit further and leveled off at the y value of 2. Uh, similarly, as I worked my way backward from that ordered pair, I had to have my slope kind of pick up a little bit, but then my slope had to level off when I got to the y-axis, and what indicates that is all these horizontal segments plotted on the y-axis. On the other side of the y-axis, I see some negatively sloped segments. Those negatively sloped segments uh, get to be more and more level as my work, I work my way across this stretch of the graph. And again, I should have technically had my my asymptote a little bit further up than where I have it. Uh, I, draw, I drew this graph symmetrically, so the fact that I messed it up on the right kind of also messed me up on the left there. Uh, but the asymptote should have been a little bit further up in the graph. Part B talks about a particular solution to the differential equation that has this initial condition. So when x is 1, if I could label that appropriately, that was a bad attempt at an x. I'm just going to get rid of that entirely. When x is 1, the corresponding y value is 0. Uh, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of this solution curve at x equals 1. Use your equation to make an approximation for the function value at point 7. So to find the equation of a tangent line, you need two things. You need the point of tangency. Well, we already pointed out. Here's the x, here's the y of the point of tangency. And then you need the slope of that tangent line. So the tangent line slope is going to come from the value of the derivative a lot of the time we just evaluate the derivative at x, but in this case the derivative depends on both x and y. So we actually have an ordered pair that we're going to have to plug into the derivative, a value of 1 in for this x, a value of 0 in for this y. I didn't necessarily have to simplify this in an on calculator for your response question, but I went ahead and did it anyhow. Uh, so on the AP exam, you don't have to do what I did here and get it simplified to four-thirds, uh, but a teacher might ask you to do otherwise, so just pay attention to the grading standard that your teacher is going with. I built my equation in point-slope form, and then I did my estimate for the function value at point 7 by putting the x value of point 7 into my line. And so I, I did kind of show that I was solving the line's equation for, for y, right? It doesn't really make a difference when I add the 0 that's right here to the right-hand side. But that's usually the step that you'll go through if you're in point-slope form at, at this point within the problem. Uh, and then I went ahead and, and just kind of simplified it a little further. Again, this right here would receive credit on the AP exam. I simplified it to negative 2 fifths. And then the last part of this, well, conveniently, my computer crashed and did not save the final steps. Let's talk about the initial steps, then I'll get the final steps on to the screen, and we'll talk about them. So the, the, the last part here asks us to find a particular solution to this differential equation with that same condition that we just used back in part B. So I separated my variables by dividing the left side of the equation by this quantity here. Uh, I multiplied the right side of the equation, which now only had a one-third x left there, by dx. And then I integrated both sides in order to 
go about solving the differential equation. So the integral here was actually pretty easy. So I, I kind of took it clear down the screen here. Uh, if I copy the one third into my antiderivative, add one to the exponent, right? So the exponent back here is, is one and then divide by the new exponent, I'm going to divide by 2. I just kind of simplified that. I already had a 1 -third. When I divide that by 2, it's going to turn into a 1 -sixth as the coefficient of x squared. That's the side I put my constant of integration onto. Other side, a bit trickier, I do have to do a u substitution. Let u equal the inner function that sits right here. The relationship between du and dy is found by taking the derivative of both sides of this with respect to y. The derivative of y with respect to y is 1. So du is just a direct replacement for dy. And so when I put du here and I put u inside this set of parentheses, what I end up with is I end up with an integral that can be rewritten like I have right here. So I just bump the differential out of the top of the fraction and left a 1 there. I noticed that and I guess the mistake that I see a lot is a lot of people get to something like this and they do natural log so often whenever they're doing separable differential equations. A lot of the time I would expect to see natural log of the absolute value of u squared. You actually don't need that formula here. This can be rewritten as u to a power. It's u to the negative second. And then you can just use the power rule to find that antiderivative, right? Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Uh, what I did is a couple things as I went from this line right here to the bottom line. I, I pushed the u to the bottom of the fraction, changed the sign on the power to positive 1. Uh, the value of the fraction was still negative, so I left that negative within the numerator. And then I put y minus 2 back in place of the u that was now in the denominator. Let me get the conclusion of the problem back onto the page here, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so I took that solution that we had at the bottom of the previous uh, column there. And I realized I wanted to find what C was. So it, I can find C before I isolate Y. I can find C after I isolate Y. If I have something that involves a plus or minus in front of a square root or absolute values or things that I'm going to have to kind of be really, really careful with the inputs and outputs of, I usually elect to find C a little bit later. But, but I thought about how I was going to solve this for Y. I'm going to multiply the right-hand side by Y. I'm going to divide the left-hand side by this quantity, and I'm not going to have any plus or minus square root or any absolute values to worry about. So I elected to solve C before I isolated Y. And so I put my ordered pair in, uh, 1 went in place of the X, 0 went in place of the Y, which gave me this, which allowed me to solve for C. After that, I, I kind of rewrote this with 1 third in place of C. And then I wanted to isolate y. So I basically did the two steps that I just mentioned a, a, a few seconds ago. Multiply the right-hand side by this denominator. Divide the left-hand side by what's over on the right side of the equal sign uh, on this top line. And then add 2 to totally isolate y. And this doesn't look very nice. We've got a compound fraction here, right? Fractions within a fraction. So on the AP exam, what I have on this bottom line boxed up here would definitely receive full credit if your teacher is... Uh, saying that you don't want to leave an answer looking like that, and, and there will be a lot that do. Uh, back here, the easy at this line right here, the easiest thing to do would be to get rid of your fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by 6. Right? If I multiply that side of the equation by 6 and distribute in, I'm not going to have any fractions there, so I'm just going to have to multiply the other side by 6 as well. And the answer will look a little nicer if you do that step, but this what I have at the bottom of the page here would receive full credit on the AP exam.